Patricia. Welcome to Dairy Business and uh, give us a little uh, impression of what you presented this morning and, and how you felt the reception was. Yeah, thanks for, for asking me to be part of this session here. Um, today I talked a lot about the activist groups and what we're working against uh, across the dairy industry. We know that there's over 147 different activist groups across the United States, and I believe over 45 of them have been formed in the last five years. So those numbers keep growing up each year, and that really shows us that what we need to do is be very vigilant against their tactics and what they're doing, and have farmers understand and know a little bit more about what the tactics are that they're using against us in the industry. Uh, you spoke about the uh, number of videos, uh, undercover videos that uh, have been uh, emerged in, in 2019. Uh, just give us a little short highlight of, of what you've been observing. Yeah, so in the last five years, we've seen 22 videos against dairy, uh, undercover activist videos against dairy farms. And within the past year alone, we had nine different videos and they spanned anywhere from your small farms all the way up to large farms. We had them all across the country and we, we learned a lot from them. We had to do a lot of reacting to them, but we learned a lot from them as well. And we're trying to be more vigilant in talking to people about what they can do to be more proactive and ready. Um, so that if an activist were to come onto their farm or they were their farm was to be involved in some type of a activist protest or anything like that, that they can have a little bit more knowledge and information about how to react or what they could do proactively there. And some of the tips that I shared with folks here is a few simple things. As activist stories come out, don't share that information online. You know, take that in and you can read it yourself, but clicking on those articles and sharing it with your friends and neighbors just gives more eyeballs to those stories. You're better off instead talking about what you might be doing on your farm or how you specifically care for your animals uh, on your farm and talk, telling that positive story versus sharing that negative story out there. The other thing that we encourage folks to do is to, you know, not not to, to share that information, but try to get out there a little bit more. Try to, you know, push themselves to be out there online if they can so that we have those positive stories to draw from. And then also don't try to speak for that farm. You know, you can't really tell what happened on that farm, what uh, came up to this process of this video being taken, but what you can do is talk about what's happening on your farm and your operation. And the other thing that we say is that your local checkoff and your national checkoff are there to support you. So if you get called uh, by an activist group, if you get called by media to talk about a story that's out there that with, involves an activist group, first take a step back and say, let me get a little bit more information. Call your local checkoff or your national checkoff and have us help you understand who that media person is that's trying to get information and what their story angle might be so that you can be better prepared to answer some questions. So we have a lot of resources at the checkoff that can help you and know that we're here to support dairy farmers through the good times and these challenging times as well. We're speaking today with Trisha Sheehan with DMI and we're at the planning conference for the Western Dairy Management Conference. Tricia, thank you for being with us. Thank you.